Hello and welcome to part two of the camper van slash motorhome self build. Um, I'm just going to go over a few more things that I did initially. Um, one of them being, I know this sounds odd, but I buffed up my van. Now what I mean by that is I bought a buffing machine and a bottle of teacup and I buffed all the paintwork and it brought it back to its original colour and it made it look like new. So that's one of the things I wanted to get done before I went any further. So another external part and it's required by the DVLA for some reason, I think it's just the look of the camper van from the outside, is an awning. So I went with the Fiamma F45S450 and this um, is quite pricey but it's a wind out awning and it fastens onto the side of your van. My van has a sloped high top roof and you can buy brackets for the Fiamma awning but these cost, I think they cost like £80 or something like that. So I just adapted the um, standard brackets that came with it and I just built it out with some hard rubber and some washers uh, and basically made my own brackets that work perfectly fine for free. So um, I just, you know, look into that before you go buying the expensive ones. And there's the awning on the side of the van. That's bolted straight through. Uh, I've got them bolts on before I've done the insulation. So that's why I've got the awning on in the early stages. Because I wanted to bolt through the side of the van. And there it is wound out. Uh, you can get the sides for this as well, so I plan on doing that in the future. So it makes your van have a bit more living area on the outside on the warmer nights and days in the summer. Talking of summer, I decided to add solar panel. Now, I'm only going to put one solar panel on for now uh, and see how it goes. If I feel like I need an extra solar panel, it's quite straightforward to add another one. But this being an external part, I'm going to bolt through the roof before I do the insulation. So it's just, again, planning and preparation, making sure you do things at the right stages. So this is a 150 watt solar panel. Uh, it goes onto the roof, the wires go down to a solar panel controller, and then that goes into the battery and charges the battery, basically. So there you can see it in place on the brackets, just below the extractor fan. Um, and that's it, really. You just fix that on, thread your wires down into the correct place. And once your wires are in place, I can then move inside and start the insulation. So I wanted to do all these little things bolting through the exterior of the van and sealing it properly so I have no leaks before I start the insulation. So things are in order. So moving on, I thought it'd be sensible to do the insulation before the electrics. So I'm putting the wires underneath on top of the insulation rather than underneath this so, so in an emergency if i ever needed to get to that wire it wasn't going to be too difficult because it wasn't going to be buried in between the van exterior and the insulation if that makes sense so i thought i'd get the insulation started and out of the way so i've used some recycled bottle insulation from b&q um it's 16 pound a roll and it does the job and it goes in easy there's no horrible fibers that you can inhale it just slots into the gaps uh, there's my partner helping me out there um so yeah we went round all the cavities filling that in um it's quite simple spray adhesive and then stick it in onto the wall so it's not going to fall down as you move also, you can see in this picture the foiled floor. So I insulated the floor and what I did, I used some um, yoga mats, so the rubber yoga mats, and I put them in between the ridges of the van and then sealed that with insulating um, aluminium tape, which then just fixed it all in place and was ideal for saving room on the head height because I wanted to maximize the room in my van and basically give in insulation at the same time. Some people put wooden battens down and then they put Celtex board in between the wooden battens but I didn't I did my research and I just felt that this wasn't needed because a lot of the furniture and the shower room and stuff are going to be taken over the floor the beds and the seats can be taken over the floor so the actual floor that you're going to see is minimal so I thought to raise your floor by an inch just seemed a bit overkill. So I went for this minimal approach just to save space. It's just personal preference. So back on an insulation point, you can see a lot of glass. 
It's a minibus, so there was a lot of windows. Now, windows are horrendous for insulation because they let heat in from the sun, which gets baking hot like a greenhouse, and they also let heat out in the winter. Um, so it, they're just terrible. So basically what I did was use some blackout film. Um, so it's vinyl, blackout vinyl. And I put this on the windows that are going to be not used. So the windows you can see there are going to be behind the shower cubicle and behind um, one of the fold-out beds. So it was only the right thing to do is to black them out. And then I just filled the cavities of the windows in with the same recycled bottle insulation and then just fast and the spray adhesive and then sealed round the edges with the aluminium tape just to um, give me maximum insulation in the van you can see there so moving on to the ceiling i use celtex board for the ceiling 25 mil because it fit in between the ridges um, that were there in the van roof anyway so they the, the boards can flush to the metal ridges that you can see there and also with the metal ridges I just push some um, recycled bottle insulation into the ridges you don't you know it, it might be overkill that but the more insulation you get in there the better really so um, I went down that road um, so yeah that's the the roof of the van um you can see here now that there's my extractor fan and the insulating board comes flush to the extractor fan um what will happen then is the um the roofing will go on and you i can put the trim around the fan to finish that all off nicely but you can see the insulation coming on good there uh, as i was doing this i could really tell that the insulation was in because um, the, the van was just starting to feel different and it's a big step to make as well you know i felt like i was really moving forward at this stage so i felt like it was time to get the flooring down so i started laying some 12 mil plywood um basically got full sheets laid them in marked it up measured it up cut out of a jigsaw and then just slotted them into place i stuck them down with sikaflex and then put some self tappers in on each corner but with the self tappers i went underneath and sealed them with sikaflex just so there's no rust risk at all so there you go you can see the plywood shaped around the stairs and going back into the van so this is what I mean about planning and preparation. You've got to think, where's my sink going? Where's my shower going? Where's the hot water going? Where's the hot water coming from? Where's the cold water coming from? So you've got to make sure you plan ahead because, like for instance, the hot and cold water, they need to go underneath the flooring because it's going to be concealed and it's the easiest place to get the hot and cold from one side of the van to the other. So I planned ahead here and got them in, um, made a channel and basically slotted them in and put the wood over the top. So just carried on laying the flooring, cutting it to size. Uh, you can see it's three quarters done now. And it's a great feeling um, to see a floor down, you know, because all I've been seeing is the insulated walls and the bare structural beams and... It's just good to see something that's going to be part of the final interior. One of my reasonings for doing the flooring at this stage was because I wanted to do the electrics. I knew I wasn't going to run any cables underneath the floor, but I wanted the base in the back to put all my electrics, all my fuse boards and batteries, because I was going to um, have these in the garage at the back. So I'm building a little garage, so that's where I'm going to keep all my electrics. So that's why I thought I would get the floor in at this point. And just to finish the flooring off, to seal it, I just used some PVA 50-50 with water. And then just painted over the whole um, of the ply, just so it's sealed and protected um, at this stage. So, 
here we go, the electrics. Um, my dad's an electrician, so he helped me out with this. I wouldn't recommend tackling electrics on your own. Always get advice, you know, for safety. This is going to be signed off with a certificate, and also my gas plumbing will be signed off, but that's a different matter. Um, there you can see a consumer, u consumer unit. That's for my 240 volt hookup. So you have a hookup when you get in sight. So you can plug into the side of your van, goes into the consumer unit, and goes into a socket, and it it will then go into a another socket and the fridge and the boiler, but that will be covered at a later stage. This is the electrics being started. So I've basically started the electrics here. So it's not complete. I'll do a video at the end, or there will be a video at the end showing them in a little bit more detail, and it's just the stage I'm at in part two part three there'll be more electrics added so there's the consumer unit also you can see the solar controller there um, this is a circuit breaker which um, basically goes onto the fuses this, if you can see the fuses in the top right corner that's a fuse box that goes to my battery alive and neutral and the light they light up if a fuse goes so you and you label each fuse so you know which appliance has gone and um, the circuit breakers are very important so in an emergency you can shut the electrics off and that's me just um wiring them together using the um, provided connectors and again more more pictures of just the fuse box uh, there's 12 fuses there so that will they will be they will cover 12 appliances whether it be lights or the fridge or the boiler or um whatever you want to link them up to uh, you can see the lights on there the lights are there because there's no fuse in them spaces so the same will happen when a fuse blows the light will come on you can see here the solar controller and a a circuit breaker for the solar so uh, again, in an emergency, you can cut the power from the solar panels because it's quite hefty power, you know, 150 watt. You can cut that and um, isolate it. Uh, another safety feature that we've added. Um, and that basically there is the leisure battery, the solar controller, uh, fuse box, consumer unit for the 240 volt. It's quite simple. Um, it just takes some planning and thinking about getting everything in the right place. Uh, I'm now going to show you a video that I did um, after I'd finished this initial setup of the electrics. It just goes over a few of the things in a bit more detail. So enjoy. So here's what I've done so far. We've got the mains hook up which goes in there so you can pay £10 plug that into your camp pitch that then goes into here which then powers this and in an emergency situation you can use your battery charger to simply clip on there flick it on, flick it on and that'll charge your battery but we don't need that because We've installed solar panels, so this is our these. This goes to the solar panel. It comes into this unit. You can that's off at the minute, um, and then once you turn that on, it will put the power into there, which will then put the power through here on a 50 amp breaker for safety. That then goes into positive and negative. So if we turn that on. Solar panel kicks in and it starts charging your battery for free from the sun, which is brilliant. Um, and then we've got our fuse board, them lights come on if any of the fuses blow so you know exactly which one to change. And I'll have a supply of fuses in here so we can just flick them out and put the new ones in, depending on what's wrong. And that all goes back up into my van and feeds all the appliances um, and that's also got a 50 amp breaker it's just there and then there's my diesel heater which goes straight to the neutral and positive because that's self-fused 
I've also got this, which is the inline fuse for the water pump, 5 amp, slow blow. That's not connected up yet, but that will be connected with a switch. So I'm going to put a switch on that, and the switch is likely to be over here or inside the van. I've not decided yet. But yeah, that's it. That's as far as I've got so far. Okay, so that brings us to the end of part two. Please subscribe and continue watching for the next parts in the self-build camper van, uh, where we can see a gloss roof being added and the water heater, boiler, uh, and many, many more elements. Uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>